Every document you work on in Photoshop CS2 is contained in its own private window. I currently have two documents open, both pictures taken on a trip to New York City. Having each document in its own window makes it easy to drag and drop elements from one document into another open document. For example, I can easily click and drag this image into this image by clicking with the move tool and let it go in this image. And now I can go ahead and work on this within this particular document. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And I'm going to step backwards and get rid of that completely. I also have Illustrator open. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back to Photoshop so I can see both documents here. And I can also see the Illustrator window. I'm going to click and drag this picture right from Photoshop into Illustrator. So I can click and drag. And now this image is now in Illustrator. I'm going to go ahead and hide Illustrator now. So as you see, this is a lot faster than using the place command in Illustrator to put this image into the document. Let's spend a little time discussing the information associated with the document window itself. Now I'm going to also close this document so we can just focus on this guy here instead of having all this stuff open and cluttered. Located at the top of each document window, which is also known as a title bar, is the name of the document followed by the file type extension. In this case, picture 001, the date, dot JPEG. So we know this is a JPEG image. Following the name of the document is the percentage that you are currently viewing it at on your screen. In this case, this picture is at 50% viewing size. And following the view size is the layer. We're currently on layer 0. Also indicated down here in my layers palette. And we're in RGB mode. Okay, so we've talked about the title bar information here. Let's move on down to the bottom here of our screen. You'll notice we have this area here, which also is indicative of the size here. 50%. 50%. So I can easily change the view size by clicking and dragging here and typing something else such as 100. Now we're looking at 100%. Or I can type 25% or whatever I need to to zoom in and out of this image instead of using the zoom tool here. I can get the same results either way. If you need to scale this window down by using your resize box here, you can always still move around in the image by holding down either the space bar and clicking and moving around in your image or you can use the scroll bars to see the area that you need to in your image. This is known as panning, like in filmmaking. Let's move on to the next area here. If you hold down the control key on your keyboard and click right here, what you'll see is a representation of the area on paper that the image will occupy. So if I printed this image out, this is approximately how large this image would appear on that sheet of paper. Let's move over now to the drop down arrow. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. And I'm going to show you some other options here as well. We can reveal this image in our bridge or we can see other information about this image. First of all, we can see the document sizes, which is right here. This document is currently just under one megabyte at 900K. We can also get a document profile, which gives us information about the color mode or color space your document is currently in. In this case, once again, we are working in the RGB color space. Document dimensions gives us the size of the currently selected document. In this case, this document is 8.889 inches by 6.667 inches at 72 pixels per inch. Scratch sizes tells us about our memory. So this image is using 240.6 megs of memory out of available 799.5. Efficiency, my computer is really rocking and rolling here, nothing's holding it back. Timing, this tells us how long it took the last tool we used to operate. For example, if I go ahead and grab the brush tool, let's go ahead and just paint something real fast. And that took one second. So this gives you an idea of how fast everything on your computer takes to do in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And we also have our current tool indicator. Currently we have the brush tool selected. Now we have the type tool selected, the dodge tool, and so on. This is another fast way to learn what each tool is called if you don't want to hover your mouse over each tool.